Some time ago, I made a video. Now, I'm sure most of you know it. It's this one. And I have the door from that video right here in front of me. And one thing I have had commented hundreds and hundreds of times is simply, once I open the door and walk through, how do I close it? Now... I thought this was relatively self-explanatory, but I have decided to make a video explaining just how to do this in multiple different ways, and that is what I have right here behind me. I have a few ways of accomplishing exactly that that I threw together quite quickly, so these are not meant to be copied exactly, these are just meant to be rough concept ideas. Now to start this video, I'm just going to go through each one of these and show exactly how it works. And then afterward, I will go into a more detailed explanation of how I converted the original over here into each one of these designs. If you want to skip ahead to one of the designs, there should be timestamps in the description. With that, let's get on with the demonstrations. So again, this is the original door that was in that video. And once you open it, and you come to the other side, there's nothing to really do. And you can flick the same lever, but then you're kind of trapped on this side. And so there's not much you can really do. For this second design, all I did was run a simple second input over to the first input. And this works. However, once you go through, you'll notice that this second input doesn't really do anything. And so to close it, I would have to reach back through the door, then it could close, and then I could flick this lever, and then it would open again. And again, this doesn't do anything, but then to close it, I can just flick this lever. So this design adds very little to the overall build, but you do have to do that additional reaching through to close the door back up. For this next design here, I went with the pressure plate, one of the classic door activation mechanisms. And so if I walk over it, you'll see that the door opens. I can walk through it. It doesn't matter if I step on this side, but the door will close all by itself. And just show that again. If I step on this side, it'll open. I don't have to step on the other pressure plate and it will close after a little bit. And the timing of how long it stays open is fully customizable. I just used a small pulse extender right here. For the next design, I made what I believe most people were expecting with the original build, and that is the first uh, modification I made over there, except that both levers work. You don't have to reach back through. Now this requires quite a bit more redstone to uh, keep it in the original design, but it's not terribly bad, and so if you want it to look nice on top, then you can make this one. And finally, I have a button leading into a T flip-flop that goes on both sides, and they're on the same block for me, but they don't have to be. They can be anywhere around here. I just uh, made it on the same block for um, decorative and simplicity uh, purposes. With that, let's get on to how to modify these. Now here I have the original door again. For this video, I'm assuming you know how to make the original door, because I'm guessing you've watched the other video, but if you don't know how, there will be a link in the description. Now for the modification, if we come through to the other side and add another lever over here, we can then build under a block so that this can actually activate the redstone dust right there. And then we can build out and then around over here, hook it up with a repeater so it doesn't go backwards. And then if we connect it all, you should see that if we go through, close it by activating that lever, then this lever will also work. And then we can go back through and close it. To make the pressure plate design, all I did was build back a few more blocks so that the door would have a little bit more time to open on both sides, just like this. And then I made a way of connecting the redstone dust like this. It'll activate that observer. And then I just put a sticky piston here with an observer here. So when it pushes out into a block like this, it will act as a pulse shortener. But then I put it into a two tick pulse so that I could then combine it with a pulse from this other pressure plate down here. 
let me go back over this a little bit slower. So all I did was add out one redstone dust here so that when I'm standing on this pressure plate, it'll act as the original lever in that design. And then all this is going out to is it's going to activate whichever side you're on. It'll activate this repeater out here. And this is going to lead to that uh, pulse extender so that the door stays open for longer. So to make that pulse extender itself, you'll need to grab a comparator. And then I just ran this repeater into a block and then made the smallest uh, comparator pulse extender here. And then just took an output from here and ran it right into uh, this block right here so that it'll act as that uh, input, that direct input. And then if I stand on here, you should see that it opens, walk through, it'll close automatically, and same with the other side right here. Now for the build with the levers on both sides that can both activate whenever, the first thing I did was remake this front part of this design so that the build still works the same but that I can have this lever going into a separate thing to check if it's being changed at all, if that makes sense. And so all I did was uh, move this observer over one into a block so it's still going to that top piston. And then I got rid of this redstone line right here and instead ran this redstone line out back here. And since observers um, are not full blocks, I can run redstone dust right through here it'll activate that, but if we reset that, if I put the lever on this block instead, we should see that the initial function is still there. So this is an equivalent design to that first design over there. Then the problem is to have both of these inputs go into a shared check system that will check if they have been switched at all. And so what I did for this front one, so that it doesn't interfere with this circuit that we just changed, I used a redstone lamp. You could use like a fence gate, but that'll make a little bit of noise. And then I ran an observer to check if that changes. And so it'll this observer will output something if the lever is on or off. And that's exactly what we want on both sides. So on this other side, you could do the exact same thing or to use less materials since there's no circuitry really over here. We can just use redstone dust because it ends up doing the same thing with an observer checking on that. And then we can run both of these into a block. Now we just need to combine these back into one circuit. And so what we can do is run one line down here with redstone dust on top. But then one thing that makes a problem here is this repeater right here, which would cause an input into this. And so what we can just do is grab some non-solid block. I'll use a uh, slab to keep with my sandstone theme here. And I'll just break that and then put redstone dust on top. And now this will combine these two signals. Now these are both one tick outputs. And so we can just put a sticky piston here with a redstone block. And now no matter what, when we change either lever, the block will either spit out or pull back its redstone block. And so all we have to do is take the further state from this redstone block and then attach it to our circuit. And now we should see that the door opens, I walk through, the door closes. And again, the door opens, I walk through, the door closes. Now for this button design, what I did is I started by placing in my buttons and then making a magic button, or rather putting a sticky piston here with an observer uh, back and forth clock here, which is where two observers face into each other, and then they will keep outputting just like this. And you'll notice that this piston is not activating, but these serve to give updates to this piston. And so when I push this button, this piston will activate, whereas if that observer is not there giving updates, it will not activate. Then I just made a small T flip-flop by putting an observer here facing this way, so when it pushes down, it can activate this piston. The reason it's not here is because when it pushes down, it'll activate this piston, and when it pulls back up, it will also activate this piston, because that activates. And so down here, it will activate this piston only once on the rising edge, and it will spit out or pull back this redstone block. And then we can just wire this up to our main circuit. And now we should see 
that when I push this button, the door opens. I can push the same button and it'll close. Obviously they don't matter because they are in the same block, so they do the exact same thing every time. This system would work, however, if the buttons were also off to the side somewhere, as long as they both run into the same circuit, one that's similar to that. Now if at any point during this video you weren't sure what I was talking about, whether it be a pulse extender, T flip-flop, something like that, there will be a link to one of my videos down in the description that will show you exactly how those work and how to build them. But anyway guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.